In today's show, we have a story on senior Eli McLean. And more information on the water walk. I'm Carson. And I'm Mike, and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. This summer, a student at Seaman went to a camp for Army training. Now he's finishing his last year of high school. Eli McGlynn, over the summer, went to basic training. Um, what we did is, it's, I went split ops. And so during my summer, I was at basic, which was 10 weeks. And then I come back after basic for school. And then I go to school. And then right after school ends, I go to AIT, which is just where I learned my, my job inside of the military where I become like a mechanic. Eli McGillen left on May 20th to complete basic at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri and graduate August 1st. I think the hardest part about basic was the not knowing. Because you'd be sitting in a room not knowing what you're going to do next. And so you're like, should I be anticipating? What should I be doing right now? And like, they teach you that they teach you that they, they're in control. Like, they're going to give you what you need to know when you need to know it. And so, like, sometimes you don't know what you're going to do, and they won't tell you until you're about to do it. Let's go see how his family felt and why he went. I, cho I chose to join the National Guard mostly due to the fact that I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, like, I'm not a very disciplined person altogether. And my parents just kind of sat me down one day, and they were like, what are you going to do, like, with your life? Like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I think I want to be a mechanic or something. And then they're like, well, you don't even do your schoolwork, so <laughs> you're not a very disciplined individual. And, I, and they're like, maybe you should join a military branch. And I was like, you know what? That's kind of a good idea. And so like, that's the reason why I joined for the most part was for like discipline, yeah. and that it just it opened up a lot. <laughs> it opened up a lot of branches and just like paths for me to explore different careers. Let's go see what he wants to pursue in the National Guard. Like maybe becoming, like working my way up to like a first sergeant. But if I don't, I'll just stay reserves and I'll go to college and try to get uh, like an apprenticeship job. That's cool. Did you know that you can join the military and still be in school? No, I didn't know that. Seems like a great opportunity. Now, on to our next story. You may have heard about the Thirst Project this year. Emery talked with Ashley Sadler to find out more about it. Hi, Mikes. I'm here with Ashley Sadler, and she's going to talk to us about Water Walking Night for the first Thirst Project. So, what is it? So, on Saturday, October 12th, from 4.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., we are having an event here at the Seaman High School Track and Football Stadium. Um, we're going to have games for all ages, um, concessions, and uh, education opportunities. But what we really need is for people to sign up for our Water Walk Relay Race. So, you and a team of four will pay $20 if you pre-register, and essentially, you're going to carry two half full five gallon buckets of water one lap around the track per person to complete a mile as a team um, in order to understand what people in third world countries are doing when they have to go collect water um, to register you can look on one of our flyers posted around the school and there's a link and if you pay the day of so you'll bring your twenty dollars to that day to a special table at the event and if you arrive and realize you want to do it then it'll be twenty five dollars at the event all right thanks ashley now back to your anchors if you're interested in participating in the Water Walk, fill out the link on Schoology. Now, on to your announcements. Spirit, next Tuesday is the deadline to submit your payment and permission slip to get on the Spirit Bus. Cost is $6, which includes transportation, pizza, and entry to the game. If you have not purchased a parking pass, see Officer McKay in the security office. If you have a pass, please park in your assigned stall. International Thespian Society is hosting Trick or Treat so kids can eat. Students can bring in canned and boxed food for their seminars throughout the end of the month. Winning seminar will be re rewarded ice cream party. Also, FFA will host Haunted Holidays on October 23rd on the SHS Fitness Trail. Kids trails from 4 to 6 p.m., adult trails from 7 to 10 p.m. Now, let's go to Ike with the sports.
chest for? This chest is for trick-or-treat so kids can eat. You can donate your food that is non-perishable. The cow with the most donations by the end of the month gets an ice cream party. Sponsored by International Thespian Society. <clears throat> oh, hi. What am I doing? Oh, I'm practicing for the water walk on... Saturday, October 12th from 4.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Seaman High School football field and stadium. All proceeds go to Thirst Project. Can't wait to see you there. Volleyball was in action last night at Topeka High. The varsity and JV teams won both of their matches. The JV tennis meet has been postponed until tomorrow due to weather. That's all for sports. Let's send it over to Josh. Good afternoon to you. Check out this sunset this morning. It was absolutely gorgeous, and you know what that means? A sign of some big changes on the way for the end of the week. We look to turn much, much colder by Friday. Let's, we'll detail that coming up in just a minute, but first, let's go ahead and look at the rest of today featuring those isolated showers around in the late morning and maybe early afternoon, but actually, I think we'll probably shake them off before 3 o'clock. So 3 o'clock, maybe an isolated shower, probably east of us, but overall drying conditions and improving weather throughout the rest of your Wednesday with highs in the mid to upper 60s. Now tomorrow there is another chance of storms, but it's really small here for Topeka. It's going to be focused in southeastern Kansas where there is a marginal to slight risk of severe weather. But the main thing for us tomorrow is going to be the temperature. So let's walk you through this hour by hour. Starting off at 8 o'clock in the morning, you can see we will be in the 60s. Then by noon, making a jump into the mid to upper 70s, some summertime heat making a return here and then by 3 p.m. down into the lower 70s as this cold front really inches close and get ready 7 o'clock tomorrow evening down into the 50s our temperatures are going to be dropping like a rock and check out these wind chills for your Friday starting off in the mid to upper 20s as you're heading out to school it is going to be very very cold and a shock compared to the temperatures for tomorrow and for our peak wind chills only in the low 40s some much colder air is on the way for the end of the week and that's also going to lead to our potential first frost Saturday morning coming about a week earlier than average. Seven day forecast shows this crazy weather, 78 degrees tomorrow, 48 but windy on Friday. At least we will have more sunshine for the weekend. So after that frost Saturday morning, sunshine for both Saturday and Sunday returns. Now, I can Carson, back to you. That's all gang. Catch us here tomorrow with a story on Fall Fun Day. Mm -hmm.